chapter 15, verse 11 through 32, King James Version. 2 Samuel chapter 9. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? He said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Maker, Maker the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan's thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Seba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread all the way at my table. Now Ziba hath fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he should eat at my table as one of the king's son. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Mika. And all that dwelt in the house of Zebra were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Chapter 10. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died and Hanan, his son, reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of thy servants for his father. And David's servant came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? And he had sent comforters unto thee. Had not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Wherefore, Hanan took David's servant and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Bethrehob and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of King Make Maker, 1,000 men, and of Ishtar, 12,000 men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all of the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering end of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and Ishtab and Mekah were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him, before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage and let us pray the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh and the people that were with him unto the battle against the Syrians. And they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then fled also before Abishai and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon 
and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadar Rezer sent and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river. And they came to Helam and Shubak. And the captain of the host of Hadar Rezer went before him. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen, and smote Shobach, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadarezer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle. Sorry, chapter 11. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab his, and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an eventide, eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messages and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed from out of the house, king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And when they to had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from that journey? Why then didst thou not go unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest and as thy soul liveth? I would do nothing. I would I will do. I would not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also and tomorrow. I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. And he made him drunk. And at the evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the masters of the war unto the king, and if so, be that king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city? When ye did fight, knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerubbesheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in the best? Why went ye not the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely, the men prevailed against us and came out unto us in the field, and we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooter shot from off the wall upon thy servant, 
and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus should thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devour one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How have hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto them, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servant, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us, let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be married. Now his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked, What these things meant? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered, and he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet, meet, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found.